right, this is not a ride sharing video. I repeat, this is not a ride sharing video. For you folks watching it on YouTube, understand you might be a couple days behind because MAGA Trump related content sometimes can be banned. Nevertheless, what up, folks? Once again, it is your boy Tim, the handsome liberal. Gonna be asking a question that some might consider controversial, but nevertheless, when we do these type of broadcasts, we hear this quite often. So I'm just going to throw it straight out there and see how you folks feel about this. Is President Biden, number 46, Joseph R. Biden, is he the worst president America has ever had? Now, in addition to that, Crystal with the lemonade, thank you very much. In addition to that, is President Trump the GOAT? I've had, I've had many viewers suggest that President Trump is the GOAT, greatest of all time. Why does folks have this sentiment? That's what we're going to be asking. Now, make no mistake about it, on the liberal side of the aisle, I don't think I've heard many liberals suggest that either even Obama or Joseph Biden as being the best president we've ever had. But I've heard a hell of a lot of folks on the right suggest Trump is the best president we've ever had. So I want to find that out for you folks. Do you see President Biden, the current state we're in right now, the economy, you know, whether you're looking at the Ukraine-Russian war, hoping it does not escalate. Do you see Biden as the worst president America has had? Even, let's just go with your lifetime. A, B, A, B, thank you. A, B, wow, thank you. I don't, man, thank you. Put me in a galaxy. So, do you see, uh, A, B, you threw me off of that, thank you. Do you see President Biden as the worst president we've ever had? Now, in the comments, let's, well, let me go to the spiel before we go to the comments. MAGA-friendly program, it always will be MAGA-friendly in its entirety. Liberals are welcome as well. We don't block, ban, or censor anyone for their commentary. You don't have to agree with the host here. Nobody gives a damn. We'll never censor or limit your time in any way when you're in the box or the comment section simply because you have a disagreement with the host. So don't worry about that. Uh, looking in the comments, 100% in my lifetime, he's been the best. No wars under Trump, peace in the Middle East. So you're suggesting that President Trump, at least in your lifetime, is the best president we've ever had. Now, I will say this in regards to wars, you know, the, the statement that we've had no wars. That is true under President Trump. We did not have any significant escalation on the global stage. So if you want to compare other presidents to Trump based on that, that's a, that's a complaint to be made. Now, I don't know. Now, for you folks who are old enough. For Jimmy Carter, I don't believe we're in any wars under Jimmy Carter, but folks on the right really dislike President Carter. But that's an interesting comment. All right, going back to the box, some folks say Reagan, first one to walk on the moon, North Korea soil like a boss. Uh, Mr. C, in regards to walking on North Korean soil, which Trump actually accomplished, is there any thing else other than saying you touch their soil. We got an African American right now that's walking on walking on North Korean soil. He's in custody, but did Trump actually get anything tangible out of walking on North Korean soil? Or is that or is that the reward? The fact that he can say I stepped foot on the soil and came back. I don't because if that is the case, perhaps Kim Jong un could say the same thing because he walked on American soil. I don't know what the average American really gets out of saying that Trump went to North Korea, stepped on their soil, or the North Koreans get out of saying Kim Jong-un came here and stepped on the soil. Nevertheless, let me keep it moving. Carter hurt the left and right and brought us to a recession. Many folks say that. Hell, Dennis Rodman did it too. Max Films and things. That is an excellent, excellent point. That Dennis Rodman also stepped on North Korean soil. And in fact, Dennis Rodman was invited there. He didn't reach out to Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un reached out to him. So that's a really good point. Uh, his worst inflation in American history was under Jimmy Carter. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. North Koreans protect their borders. That is true. Do you want America 
to protect this border the same way North Korea does? Do you believe immigrants trying to get into this country the undocumented way should be treated the way North Korea treats folks trying to get into their country in an undocumented fashion? Do you believe we should escalate it to that level? Let me know in the comments as always. The box is open. No one will be black banned or censored for their opinion. Understand that is President Trump the best president we've had in this country's history, or at the very least in your lifetime? And the counter question is, is President Biden the worst? I'm going to be asking folks when they come in the box, I need you to explain why the hell you have a belief like that, no matter which way it go. So understand you will be questioned on that. Uh, looking in the comments, terrible question, says Willie Nilly. Love the name. You can suggest it's a terrible question, but folks are saying it so much, it led yours truly to, to ask. Because I hear so many folks suggesting that president is the tr is the GOAT, and I hear so many folks, particularly my beloved MAGA, suggesting that Biden is the worst president we've ever had. So I'm asking the question based on what I'm actually hearing. It's not just, I'm not just fabricating this out of thin air. This is what many constituents, many voters are actually saying. Uh, looking in the comments, Sleepy Joe is the worst. Why is President Biden the worst we've ever had? I'm really curious to know that. Do you know what the poem of the statue of he and Joe, wait a minute. I didn't see what that said. Do you know what the poem on the Statue of Liberty says? You're talking about bringing tired, weary, and poor? You know, I'll go to the box real quick, but I will say this. In my humble opinion, what the founding fathers were saying, stuff like all men are created equal, separation of church and state, what you're pointing out that's written across the crown at the Statue of Liberty about bringing us your tired, your weary, your poor. In my humble opinion, you're talking lip service. You're talking about like when a, a relative tells you at the, when you lose a loved one and a relative or a friend at the funeral says, well, call me if you need anything. They don't really mean that shit. It's just something to give you a sentiment in hopes of helping you feel better at the time. They don't mean for you to actually call them and ask them for some money or something. They don't expect that to happen. And that is what I truly believe. All men are created equal. Uh, separation of church and state, and some of these other slogans that the founding fathers originally stated, they didn't actually mean that shit. It was just a sentiment to make us all feel better. But the moment everybody decided to try to be equal or try to separate church from state, you clearly found out, no, they wasn't really meaning that shit. It just sounded good at the time. So that is my humble opinion. Going back to the box, we'll start it out with a name like this I can't hate on. The truth hurts. Make it hurt so good. Is President Biden the worst we've ever had? Truth hurts. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How's it going? It's going good. So what do you think? Folks have suggested that Biden, Joseph R. Biden, 46th president, worst we've ever had. Do you agree with that sentiment? Correct. Correct. I 100% agree. Uh, I think Joe Biden, in fact, that he wants to run again, you know, it, it really disappoint me for Democrats. Like, y'all got to do better. Y'all got to pick someone younger. But if Joe Biden is someone who will best represent the Democratic Party, you know, I, I really feel, I really, really feel bad. So, we, I, I got a few questions to ask you on that, but before I do, let me find out from the other side. Do you believe President Trump is the best we've ever had? One of the best. Okay. Now, in regards to President Biden, what do you believe Biden has done to put him down to the level of being one of the worst presidents we've ever had? Uh... I'll, I'll definitely say the economy. Um, we've been in a wait, wait. We've been in a Great Depression before. You're comparing the economy under Biden to what we dealt with in the 1920s. You think it's worse? I mean, we went from a good economy from Trump to Biden, so you know, inflation is uh, all time high, and he wants to quote, you know, a jobs market where those jobs are just you know, the jobs that we lost during the uh, pandemic. So we're just recovering those jobs, but, 
you know, uh, Biden policy caused rent, you know, to go insanely high and, you know, uh, house prices. So you can't afford to, you know, buy house, you know, rent, food, gas, you know, gas right now, it's four dollars again. So, you know, it, people yeah, are let me let me let me interject and say this under President Carter, for instance, you had lines so long it took you an hour to get gas. How is Biden what's going on right now with Biden worse than that? I'm trying to figure out how you, you're putting Biden in the bottom of the barrel. And I'm talking about depressions and gas lines that are all the way down the block. I'm trying to figure out how does Biden supersede these folks? No, because we we just came from a good economy, right? We okay. were all we we're right doing Trump. You know, we were um getting money, you know, paying lower gas prices. And people got comfortable around this, and then nobody's ready for inflation and, you know, paying, you know, have to work two or three jobs to even, you know, live among your means, you know, pay for food. But wait, for but wait, you, so you believe the, uh, the, the, the necessity of Americans to work two or three jobs to get by, you believe that's something that just started with Biden? Like under Trump, you can work one job and easily get by? You think the two or three jobs did Americans have that's a new thing? No, I mean, you could afford it, you know, uh, with one full time job under Trump, you didn't have to pay, you know, two thousand uh, dollars a rent, you know, for example, four dollar gas or, you know, uh, for a loaf of bread cost four dollars. So you didn't have to pay that under Trump, you know, my under Biden, you might have to get an extra extra part-time job, maybe three jobs, you know, just to afford to live and pay, you know, your monthly rent of $2,000, $2,000 a month because of, you know, uh, so let me, so let me ask you this. What do you think president Biden did after taking office that's destroyed the economy as bad as you're painting? What, what do you think he's done to cause that? Uh, yes. Uh, as a landlord, uh, you couldn't evict people. You know, and you know he, he, so he stopped landlord from doing that as well, and uh, gave a lot of protection for uh, a tenant, which you know end up backfiring, and also rent control. You know, rent control has been proven to be ineffective, and does not help rent goes, you know, going down. Well, wait a minute, is it, when you talk, when you start talking about being tenant friendly as opposed to landlord friendly, making it either easier or harder to evict someone, isn't that a state's rights issue? You're telling me the president is passing laws to make it easier for tenants. You're talking about this is all done at the federal level? Yes, uh, Joe Biden did uh, protect tenants from, you know, not being able to pay their rent and they could, you know, uh, stay without getting evicted. And you have to okay. take it all the way to courts. Okay. I have not heard of this. So this is this is news to me that so this is so in other words, nationwide, thanks to President Biden, if someone does not pay rent, Biden has made it harder to evict someone nationwide. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Any idea what what is, what exactly law did he pass? I haven't heard this. Uh, in terms of law, there's nothing uh, like coming. I have to look it up as well. But I know during the uh, like you know when Biden took office, that's when um, landlords couldn't evict, and Joe Biden, uh, what one of his uh executive orders it was one of the executive orders that he passed well if you're saying if you're saying it happened when he first took office you do realize when biden took office we were in the middle of a pandemic whereas people could not work and did not have money to pay rent do you want it to still be where even though the pandemic has shut your office down and you're no longer earning income do you want do you want landlords to still be able to evict people in the middle of that no, I mean, uh, there is other options like, you know, payments and stuff, but people are just refuse to make any type of payments and, you know, uh, and you couldn't evict them.
which I think that's wrong. That's abuse. That's, you know, you're abusing your stay. You know, you're not looking at other option and you have to take it to court. And Joe Biden was protecting tenants. Well, but think about it, though. Like I pointed out, there was there was a pandemic happening where people could not work and the courts themselves were shut down in most areas. How could you evict somebody in the middle of that, even if you wanted to? Uh, I mean, I'll say when uh, when it ended, right, when did the pandemic, you know, technically ended? Right. 20, 2022. And there's there are millions of jobs. Right. So. Right. There's not really excuse to not pay your rent. So if there is so many jobs right now, and I totally agree with you, why are we suggesting that Biden is the worst president in history when he has such great jobs? Members, you want a job right now in today's economy? It is almost easy. It's, it's very easy to find a job. So why are we suggesting he's the worst president in history when jobs are all over the place? Uh, because yeah we do have jobs right but at the same time uh, the effect of such policy hurts and also inflation made it three times harder you know bread went from a dollar to four dollars eggs you know in my state it's like six dollars so it's not normal and joe biden's not doing anything to address inflation or how to reduce inflation you know, he wants to talk about the CHIPS Act or, you know, he doesn't even want to focus on inflation, guys, prices at all. And I think, you know, if Trump was in the office, he would have, you know, took priority to, you know, put American first. And Joe Biden doesn't have any interest on putting American people first. All right. Fair enough. I do got to move it on. But last I want to ask you one final question before we move on, which is suggesting that Biden is the worst president in U.S. history. Is it safe to say that you don't believe Biden has done anything good for America at all? Uh, no, I would say Biden has done the opposite than good. Uh, mostly. I'm not going to touch base, but mostly on the LGBT, which is, you know, another concern. But I feel like when Trump gets back, you know, things will go back to normal. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you're saying Biden did nothing good with the exception of the LGBT community. But when Trump gets back, things will go back to normal. So what would happen, in your opinion, with the LGBT community if Trump is reelected in 2024? Keep men out of women's sports. That's it? And a lot of other things that he mentioned, but... Give me some Give me some examples. One, uh, keep men out of women's sports, and, uh, and then try to think of other things. Uh, Gender-affirming care. Uh, and I don't think... I don't support that at all, so I think Trump will, you know, fix that. And a lot of, you know, Joe Biden and other Democrats want to push the agenda. I think Trump will uh, help prevent okay. and stop the agenda. All right, fair enough. Appreciate you coming in. Now, in the comments, people are asking, are you from the U.S.? Are you are you American? Are you in this country? Yes, I am in the state of Maine. Okay. Are you originally, were you born in this country? Uh, yes, but I've, like, lived out all abroad and then i came back uh because my dad is in the military uh, yeah but i i do think that people need to really focus on policy and who to elect in 2024 and i think trump is the best candidate if you want sure. things to go back to normal all right, fair enough. Appreciate you coming in. And it, it, I wasn't making any dig at you know whether you were born here. And I, it just sounds like you have an accent. That's why I asked. And folks in the comments were pointing it out. But you're always welcome back. Truth hurts. Good conversation. All right, Jeez. looking in the comments. By the way, question we're asking. And I, yeah, I see Marquez Hayes. You asked by, back to normal. And, you know, normal is a different. You know, everybody interprets the phrase back to normal differently depending on the actual constituent voter and American citizen. So, well, my last caller suggested that under Trump, things would be back to normal. 
I'm thinking personally myself of the summer of 2020 when Black Lives Matter was rioting and things like that all over the country. Police injustice, police reform was the main topic on the menu. Under Biden, there has not been any rioting or any of that stuff. So if Trump gets elected, are we going to get that back? Because that was the norm back then. So it depends on what your de your, de your definition of back to the norm is. Uh, looking in the comments. Yeah, no thanks to Trump's norm, says KS. By the way, folks, tap the screen. 700 plus of you in here. You could be anywhere you want to be on this app. The fact that you're rolling with your boy is always an honor. This is a MAGA-friendly program. It always is, always will be. Liberals are welcome as well. We don't block, ban, or censor anyone for their commentary. Going back to the box, real quick, Mark says we should vote based on policy. I agree with him on that point. just want to say this real quick. It's very common to hear folks on the right, particularly my beloved MAGA, suggesting that you should not vote based on emotion. You should vote based on the, the you know legislation, policy, the economy, things like that. In my humble opinion, the best way to ensure people do not vote based on emotion is to not fuck with their emotions to begin with. If you don't want people in their feelings, quit saying things that put people in their feelings. Why don't we try that as opposed to suggesting everybody ignores all of the things that are going on that are pissing people off? Now, if you got to implement legislation, such as what Greg Abbott is doing, Governor Abbott in Texas is putting these traps in the water, that's going to piss some people off. That's going to satisfy some other people. But he believes he's doing what's in the best interest of his state. Any politician is going to do things like that that piss some people off. But just flat out name calling and insulting people for no reason at all. That right there, if you don't want people voting on their emotion, stop doing this shit. It's very easy. Stop doing it. Now, going back to the box, we'll keep it moving. Jess, good afternoon. Welcome to the program. You guys tapping the screen. I appreciate it. 20,000 likes would be lovely if you don't let your thumbs be lazy. Jess. Joseph R. Biden, worst president in U.S. history. What say you? Um, you know, I'm not going to say that he's the worst. I'm also kind of indifferent to him. I feel like it's been coasting um, that we have come to a place. I believe putting Trump back is going to cause so much civil unrest again that I think that Biden has given us a break from that. Um, why do you think start... Trump, why do you think a, a resurgence of Trump, Trump being number 47, why do you think that would cause civil unrest? Well, police reform, that was that was huge in 2020. And we saw um, we saw a lot of legislation, a lot of attacking teachers, a lot of attacking police. So those things are just basic infrastructure for our country to move forward. And people were pissed. I don't see yeah. that as much now. I'm not saying that, that that's Trump's fault. I'm not saying that Biden fixed it. I'm just saying I think putting Trump back is going to create too much feeling and emotion. I'm just done with old white men. They both got to go. Like, it's, it's just unequally. It is so, it is so much. We're not all old white men. Why are we being represented by them? It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Well, I want to say this in regards to your... Yeah, in regards to your old white men comment, I will say this. The Liberal Party is not very happy with Biden, and they do want someone else like a Gavin Newsom or somebody younger. But the on the right on the right side of the aisle, they're not interested in anything else other than Trump. So the old white man thing on the, on the right side of the aisle, that's exactly what they want. Well, of course it is, because um, just, just this Jason Aldean song. Now, I'll tell you, Handsome, where I am at. <laughs> I am in South Dakota. So I have a very small population over a very large piece of land, um, but I'm from Colorado. I'm not from really a city, but I'm from Colorado just in general. So all of the things mixed together. South Dakota, we don't have that. And I did not realize how, how, um, how racist our country was. I didn't, I didn't have the history. South have Dakota is racist? Oh, dear Lord. It is, Give me it some is examples. So terrible. Give me some examples. Examples. Um, one Native American woman a day goes missing 
in South Dakota. Damn. There's, there's, you think there's, this is you think our, this is happening at the you wait wait you and by the way your mayor your governor is fine as hell even though she must be a racist but let me ask you this we, do you, you know think no, that the, was, wait, we would we would all we would all be fine as hell with that much plastic surgery I mean that that much <laughs> <laughs> here's all here's, right here, fair enough this, Chris you know I have a personal beef with this bitch because my my kids do rodeo my daughter was rodeo queen riding horses since they were old enough to sit up and she I, i'm poor she worked her way up she we, we worked our way up from from owning you know just mustangs from 75 dollars at an auction so my kids weren't pulling up in the best equipment they weren't pulling up just to win they were pulling up because they love it they love the sport they want to compete my girls have competed with the boys their entire lives so christy gnome makes me rage and in 2020 my daughter um became rodeo queen and she had worked for that for her whole rodeo career through high school and all the rodeos were canceled the parades were canceled um we didn't we didn't we weren't able to even go Why? outside and have but because of covid and okay. of course south dakota stayed open that's why south dakota did not stay open south dakota canceled every small town event every rodeo until about uh july and in july we opened back up because and that's because of sturgis we wanted people to come for sturgis which turned out to be really a disaster for covid spread um, but we did so what, have a rodeo so in July. And Chris, listen, hold on. I'm going to get to my point. Christy Nome. Okay, I got it. I'm going to I'm gonna have to move you on, but go ahead. Yeah, Christy Nome took the position that my daughter should have had. So carrying the American flag is the rodeo queen's duty. The highest ranking queen at the rodeo gets to carry the flag. That's what you work for. You work to carry that American flag. You work for that honor. And Christy just stole it out from minute. That bitch isn't a rodeo queen because she can ride a horse? No, thank you. <laughs> Get me in a room with her. I, I want a minute. I want okay. a minute. So I want to ask no, you this, though. In regards to the Native Americans that are coming up missing, do you believe that's something that's being done at the hand of white people in that state? I believe that we're, what we're doing is so creating infrastructure. So these pipelines, the building of pipelines, the great span of space that we have over Interstate 80 that runs through or I'm not sorry, it's interstate 90 that runs through South Dakota east to west is right. so barren. There's just nothing out there. And that's where, so Warren Jeffs um, out by where Mount Rushmore is at. So there's these compounds. There's like weird shit. Like you can't, there's a lot of movement of trucks going in and out. There's a lot of sonic booms. Everyone needs to be paying attention to South Dakota. If you want to know where our country is going, look here. Please. But I'm but I'm I'm still kinda I'm still not I'm not understanding. Country. I'm still not understanding. What do you think in your opinion is happening to these people that are coming up missing? I I think that men are taking them. And I think that they're marginalized. We're not they're we're not exercising resources to protect them, to educate them. Um that Pine Ridge reservation just get online and get on Google Maps and stroll through it. It is yeah. so devastating. But, but let, but let's I, just I, just be had, clear. I had no idea that's what a reservation looked like. I had no idea. But, but wait a minute. Let, let's just be clear. I used to be an over the road driver, so I've made deliveries on a hell of a lot of these reservations. I do. I mean, I've been down in Navajo near Four Corners. I've been up in your state. I've been up in North Dakota as well. So I've seen them. But I will. I will ask this. In regards to Native American women coming up missing, I don't hear the liberals, folks on my side of the aisle, I don't hear them making a big fuss about this either. Oh, that's because that's because we're just not able to, to garner the attention for it. Be and, and a little bit of it is because we're so small. No one, okay, our governor's fine as hell. We're looking at Christy, we're like, oh my God, she's beautiful. Well, guess what? I'm beautiful too. So what? It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. We all, all right. fucking ate, even Christy. So she she better get her priorities straight, and <laughs> coming up, come, th this this place is just racist. Let me tell you, there, there are no black people where I'm at. My son plays AAU ball. He's gonna be a senior, and so I get to be around. I mean, really, that that's the community that I go to because my son is a seven foot ball player. He's a, he's a seven foot seventeen year old, and so he's now your getting, son now your son is white though, right? Your son is not biracially. My son is white. But he played, okay. he played, my son, my son is, well, he's brown, but he, he is, he's white passing. So we'll, we'll do that because we, um, I don't, you know. What is that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Me. I can't let you get a word like white passing by me. Is he biracial? He doesn't, he doesn't look brown. He doesn't look brown. He looks white. What is he? What is, what actually is he? 
He's me. I, what I is know, this I day? What I am? I don't. I don't know what. I, I, I've never done a DNA test. I don't know what I am. I know my culture, okay. the way I was, the way I was raised, would be what I would consider white. I didn't know anything different. What about I his dad? I'm, I'm 47 years old, so I. What about I, I'm his like dad? Conan, part what red. about his dad? He's he's white. Brown. Okay. He, he, right. he, might, he, might have, he might have a little bit of Hispanic Mexican in him. Okay. All right. There, there All right. That's what we're trying to get. At. I'm All trying right. to get. I'm trying to get at. I would not feel comfortable inviting. So let's let's say I I had you know an event going on. I would not feel comfortable inviting black people to my community, and and uh, knowing that they're going to be safe here. Mm. Have you heard language or have you heard snide comments? Maybe the N word. Have you heard stuff like that from your neighbors and people in your community? There are there are Confederate flags in my across the street from me. Yes, I hear it. I don't hear it around me anymore because I mean, all it's all it takes now is like, I'm going to look at you like, OK, we can do this because we'll do this. I, I tend to be very outspoken in that. I just, yeah. I find it disgusting. I find it disgusting. And um, there was, there was a, so I live in a really small town and there was a black kid walking back and forth. And I saw him a couple of times. My dogs let me know if there's anything. I mean, my dogs let me know if my neighbors have company. Um, so I, I did see this kid and I thought, well, what, I mean, what's he doing in Maconda? <laughs> I live in Maconda. Um, <laughs> I know. Don't, it, it don't can't be crazy. Words, you're not here's driving the down the street. The you're thing. not driving neighbor, down the street bumping like, Jason Aldean. Did you did you see that black man? He was over by the pool, and I'm like, well, my, like, what was he doing? Oh my God, like by the pool. He wasn't. He wasn't. He was walking. He wasn't doing anything. I'm just saying it's it's not safe. And people, even me, I'm gonna wonder what's he doing here because I I fear for his safety, not for me. Ooh. But yeah, for I the get people you. that I I don't hear those words anymore. My son is a ball player. I sit with these mothers. I sit with these kids. I I don't play that game. So people don't necessarily play it around me because I'm gonna I'm gonna come back pretty hard, but it yeah. does happen. But I mean, let's just talk. be honest. I got I, I, I do have to move. Hey, hold, on, hold on, just I do have to move it on. But let me just say this: if you live in a neighborhood that's all white and a black guy come through the neighborhood, you gotta understand what they're gonna notice. I mean, if I if I live in an all black neighborhood and one white dude is walking through the neighborhood, we're gonna probably have the same conversations in our neighborhood because this person does not look like anybody here. That doesn't necessarily mean that people are racist, do it? What, what happened though, I saw it too. I saw it and thought, what's he doing here? Someone else saw it and thought, he's a danger. There's a problem. Okay. I saw it and thought, does he have family here? Does he have, you know, is there, I mean, obviously there's no jobs here for that. It's a farming community and people that have lived here, farm here and right. have farmed here for generations. Um, what city are you in? Well. What city are you in? Wakanda. Oh, you're actually in Wakanda? That's a real I am town? I Wakanda, South Dakota. <laughs> I thought, that was, I I thought you were making I'm jokes making on the movie. I can't, I, can't make, I can't make that up. I thought it's, you it's, were making it's, jokes it's, on the movie. I no, didn't know that was a no, real sir. town. I don't, make, I don't make jokes like that. I am too passionate about this subject. And this, this stupid song, Come to a Small Town, every piece of violence I've ever experienced, every, at the hands of the old... The, the, the good old boys, fuck that. They're they're a problem, <laughs> and they have the system straddled. They can control it any which way they want. Try that in a mm. small town. That people don't know what they're talking about, but they they can tell me about it because I've experienced the violence. I've experienced the court system going through the wrong hands. I've experienced people getting away with shit they shouldn't be getting away with. I've now experienced watching the racism. I can't. I don't have any claim mm. to that, obviously. But watching yeah. it is is so offensive. I'm, I'm angry. It's kind of, yeah, I would and assume I like if, 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 yeah, if, if you're seeing that, I got to assume it's depressing. But, but Jess, I do got to move it on. I appreciate you coming in. I okay. think this is our first You have a good day, talk. sir. You too. You too. Come on watch, back anytime. Watch South Dakota. Watch South Dakota. I promise All you. All right. All right. And you think the governor of South Dakota is quite attractive, but I'm also in, I'm also a big fan of uh, Governor Whitmer in Michigan. I think she's attractive too. In both cases, in both cases, I've heard a lot of people say both of those women have had a hell of a lot of work done on them. Golden, yeah, with the hat and mustache, always a pleasure. So back to the question: 
Is President Joseph R. Biden, our 46th president in American history, is he the worst president in U.S. history? I'm asking this question because I get it asked all the damn time. I'm going to go back to the box. Nevertheless, some folks are saying that Trump is the GOAT, greatest of all time. Do you buy into either one of those sentiments? If so, when you come in the box, I'm going to question the hell out of you. Who just sent that shit? Oh, my God. Uh, I don't know who just sent that. I really wanted to... Is that Theodore? My goodness. Out in space. Thank you. Anyhow, the program is MAGA-friendly. Always will be. Nevertheless, liberals are welcome. Thank you for that. Thank you. Tap the screen. Get your boy up to 25,000 likes. Not Let your thumbs not be lazy. Could be anywhere you want to be. In fact, that you're here with your boy is an honor. We don't block, ban, or censor any damn body simply because you have a disagreement with the host. You have a right to speak. We're not going to interfere with that. Going back to the box. Let's keep it moving. William Long, definitely a friend of the program. We're asking the question. Trump, best president in history. Biden, folks are saying he is the worst. What say you, Mr. Long? Ooh. William. It's bad feedback. I don't know what's going Hello? Okay. I'm hearing you fine. Are you still getting feedback? Yeah, this isn't good. I'm going to have to get out. Okay. All right. Drop and come back in. We'll figure it out. I have a program up from Canada. Trump 2024 says, Sasky, dude. I don't, if you have a candidate like Trump in the, in the, you know, in the Canuck state, in, in, in the Maple Leaf area, up in there in Canada, are you willing to get rid of universal health care, which you guys have in Canada completely? I'm assuming you'd be a fan of Second Amendment rights. Do you want abortion to be limited throughout your provinces and in your states in Canada? Just want to ask you that, because you're saying Canada Trump 2024. Do you believe most Canadians would be happy with Trump-like policies in that country? I'm pointing out some very popular right-wing policies. Christianity taking a stronger hold in Canada. At the very least, limited abortion access, at least in some of your states and provinces. Second Amendment rights for everybody in the country, you may favor that one. But nevertheless, I'd like to know, you think Canada would be in favor of right-wing Trump-style policies? Uh, looking in the comments, if Trump was the GOAT, he would have won a second term. Lion Cornerstone, I agree with you 100%, but we know what folks on the right, my beloved MAGA, are going to suggest that he did win a second term and was stolen from him. I don't submit to that theory, but that is the sentiment that they're going to, that's how they're going to respond to that answer or that statement. You must be born with generational wealth. You certainly got to be talking to somebody else other than my black ass. I don't have wealth right now, much less generational wealth. Abortion limited. Oh, I just, I did something wrong. Damn, I, I just muted somebody by total accident. Uh, going back to the comments, abortion, all right. Whoever I muted, I do apologize. I tapped the screen and it happened. Aren't abortions completely illegal now? No, they're not. In liberal states, you can still have a pregnancy terminated. In right-wing states, Many of them are still fighting through their court system to ban it. So even in some right-wing states that want to get rid of abortion, they haven't successfully did it yet. But that is the goal in the right-wing states for the most part is to greatly limit or eliminate abortion abilities altogether. But it hasn't completely taken hold. They just rolled it back a few months ago. All right, going back to the box. I really banned somebody, and I'm really pissed off. I don't know who it was. I can't unban you because I don't know who it was. Uh, nevertheless, you got a bunch of folks in here. I do appreciate that. Bitch Stewie. <laughs> what can we do with a name like that? Bitch Stewie. We're at <laughs> President Biden, worst president in history. Talk to me, bitch. Hey, what's going on, Hanson? Not much at all. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say he's the worst president um, because he's not a president. He's just leading by uh, by being there. He does nothing. So when you say he's not a president, are you suggesting that currently in America there is no commander in chief controlling this country? No, he he is the sitting president, but he doesn't do anything. 
he's he's being handled by the bureaucracy and he just lets them do as they will so if president biden is not the current president or he's not as you say he's being handled then why are the folks on the right blaming him for everything if according to you he's doing nothing at all because he's the one being handled. The bureaucracy, the deep state, couldn't handle Trump, which is why they put him in the position he is in right now. So if the deep state is handling Biden, why are folks criticizing Biden? Shouldn't they just go straight for the deep state? I mean, Biden is just a puppet, according to you. And by the way, who runs the deep state? We need names. I mean, you can't just say this entity. Who runs, if I wanted to go and deal directly with the deep state, who would I go to? It doesn't really work like that. It's uh, it's an entity all of it, all in itself. I mean, it is the bureaucracy. It's Nobody the leads the deep within state? Itself. The deep state no. has no leaders? Nobody's making the decisions? No. Then how does that work? He's, he's a puppet being controlled by the deep state. But there is no names of the deep state. How does how does the mechanics of that work? It's a multitude of bureaucracies. Okay, the, give me some deep state of, members. There have to be human beings in it, right? No, you just got to think about it like this. The objective of, of any bureaucracy is to increase itself. Now look at all of government bureaucracies. That's all they do is increase themselves increase their budgets, increase themselves. And who is doing that for them? That's Joe Biden. Yeah, but let's say, for instance, the deep state supports a woman having a right to have an abortion. There has to be somebody that is talking to Biden to say, well, you got to follow this policy. You're telling me the deep state, but there's no human being names associated with it at all? It's just some type of cloud? Is that some type of cloud? Is that what you asked? Yeah, it's like, I mean, there's no human, you can't give me any names, anybody of leadership prominence in the deep state? Sure, like the Clintons, the Obamas. Okay, so you see, do you see the Clintons and Obamas instructing Joe Biden on what to do? Um, directly and indirectly, yes. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, so at the end of the day, Biden is just a puppet. But if that is the case, then, I mean, because neither the Clintons nor the Obamas were considered as very bad. Pre- I mean, you don't think Obama was a bad president, do you? Or do you think that? Do you think he was a terrible president as well? Um, no, I don't think Obama was a terrible president. I wasn't a fan of a lot of his policies, but I don't consider him to be a terrible president, no. So what ma- what really makes Biden so bad? Because it's not just Obama and the Clintons handling him. Like I said, it's the deep state, and that's a multitude of, of bureaucracies. And no one bureaucracy has power over the other. It's like getting instructions from every direction and you're just letting the bigger fish take the lead whatever the case may be whatever that uh, policy okay. so if, if, Biden, if, if Biden is this bad can you explain why his poll numbers compared to Trump still seem to be highly competitive if not favorable if he is as bad as you're saying why in this stage of his presidency people are still indicating they're willing to support him Because they're wrapped up in their hatred for Trump, they're victims they, of propaganda, why, and they and they and they know not what they do. <laughs> so, why do you believe such a large, and I mean emphasis on large portion of this country's population hate Trump? You think they're all pretty much wrapped up, like you just pointed out? You're talking about what potentially maybe 70, 80 million people. You you group them all under this category? I think a majority of them are, yes. Why do you think they have this hatred of him? They're victims of propaganda. They're victims of the machine. Give me some examples of the propaganda you're talking about. From day one, when Trump took office, 
everything that's ever been said about him has been negative. You, you, you know, death by a thousand cuts. Over time, people stop thinking and they just start believing everything they hear. You get online and all you hear is people, how much they hate Trump. Like, I rarely hear, especially from a lot of these TikTokers, TikTokers, what policies they love about Joe Biden. I hear how much they hate Donald Trump. I, I tend to agree with you, but I want, I guess one of the things I want to ask you in regards to why people are hating Trump. So you believe Trump is 100% innocent and folks are just hating on him for no reason at all other than propaganda. He's done nothing at all to deserve this. People are just wrongfully hating on him? 100% innocent? No. You don't become a billionaire and by being 100% innocent. Um, I just think a lot of the propaganda is... Is it's outlandish, it's divisive, and it's designed specifically to be that way. So, like, like for instance, get... just uh, to to address your your well, just let me address to address your previous guest. I'm just reading this here. Donald Trump has signed an executive order creating a White House task force on missing and murdered Indigenous women. Trump called the scourge of violence facing Native American women and girls sobering and heartbreaking what have democrats done for this nothing that's a good that's a good question and i you if you notice i presented that question to the last caller let me respond to something you also said about day one since trump came in office nothing positive was ever said about him now when trump came in office on day one he had already tweeted out a picture of his wife next to Ted Cruz's wife, asked who would she choose. He had put Lindsey Graham's phone number on national TV, talked about uh, Mitt Romney getting down on his knees as if he wanted to suck Trump's dick, and Obama was born in Kenya. All of that happened on before day one. Do you see where Trump has done anything to potentially make people hate him due to his own rhetoric? Sure, sure, yeah. I mean, he's a, uh, he can be a little bit harsh, and I mean, and was it not Obama himself that said he was a Kenyan? Well, Obama said, if you want your doctor, you can keep your doctor. You didn't believe that. Why are we picking and choosing what folks believe um, and what I, they don't? I did at the, I did at the time when he said it. Okay, do you believe it now? No. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, All right, that was well, a lot. Yeah, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is this. Obama also said he was from the United States several times as well. So Trump went on suggesting that Obama was born in Kenya long after Obama started saying, no, that's not true, releasing birth certificates and all of that. He continued pushing that narrative. Do you see that as a legitimate reason for Obama supporters to hate Trump on day one? No. So should they ignore it? No, it was Obama himself who, who said that and then said later that it wasn't true. So if you're giving me two different uh, two different truths, which one am I supposed to believe? Well, I guess, I guess the question I'd ask, why out of all of the Republican Party does it seem that really only Trump was the one that ran with this Obama was born in Kenya narrative, even if you're saying that Obama said it? Why wasn't most of the other Republican members? You didn't hear any of the other Republicans, including all 17 of them that were on stage in 2016, all running for the Republican ticket. None of them, except for Trump, was saying that Obama is born in Kenya. Why is that? Uh, many of them were establishment Republicans and, again, part of the machine. You think Ben Carson you know, is an established they, Republican they can... and part of the machine? Yes. Ben Carson, the brain surgeon, was an established Republican oh, and I'm part so, of the I'm machine? So, I'm sorry, I, I didn't... You kind of muffled out. I thought you said somebody no. else. No, not Ben yep, Carson. Sir. No, and actually, during the primaries, Ben Carson was my first choice. But unfortunately, we didn't get him. We got Trump. But uh, I think Trump about, turned out to be better than than we thought he would be. Okay. So at the end of the day, do let me ask you personally: Do you believe Obama was born in Kenya? 
Um, I haven't seen his birth certificate. So you believe it's possible? I believe it's possible, yes. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So Trump, indeed, in your opinion, do you believe he's the greatest president, at least in your lifetime? Yes. Based on what? Elaborate. Based on how he exposed uh, the media, something that I believe to be true for 20 plus years now. What did he expose like about news the media? Wasn't, fake, fake news wasn't something that Donald Trump came up with. It's been a belief of many of us on the right for, for decades now. Well, so Sarah, his, Sarah, Palin, Sarah Palin was known for the lamestream media. She exposed the media to the Republicans in 2007. What did Trump do in terms, you said he exposed the media. I'm going to give that credit to Sarah Palin. What did Trump do that Sarah Palin hadn't done already? He made it mainstream. And Sarah Palin, Sarah Palin did not? failed to do so. Nah, she lost. You, uh, I, I, think that the, I think that the outrage toward the media was pretty stronger than Sarah Palin. She lost the race, I get that. But you don't need to win the election to expose the media, do you? No, but she didn't have four years in, you know, in the Oval Office to, to push that as well. So, Fair and enough. So with Trump being in your opinion... From, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so with Trump being the best president in history, in your opinion... Uh, but I would like to know, and by the way, folks, tap the screen, get your boy up to 40,000 likes. We got 800 plus of you in here, some lazy ass thumbs in here. Tap the screen, get your boy likes up. With Trump being the best president in history, in your opinion, give me three policies that you believe, but by far make it so that everybody should know Trump is the best we've ever had. Give me three pieces of legislation, three things that Trump did that puts him head and shoulders above the rest. First Step Act, Opportunity Zones, his policy at the at the border. What is his policy at the border? Remain in Mexico. That that alone puts him above making him, you know, having a guy uh, putting a guy on the moon, defeating Hitler, freeing the slaves. You really think the, his border policy? Propels him to the top. Oh, you said in my you now you you said in my lifetime now. Okay, all right, my 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 mistake, my mistake. Okay, in your lifetime. What about Ronald Reagan tear down this wall, reuniting Germany or defeating the Soviet Union? Yeah, those are those were great moments in time for sure. Um, I was a kid during those times, but I remember Reagan <laughs> saying that. Um, right. All right. I was very I was very young, but yeah. All right. Great. So you, you think America's going to reelect Trump? What do you think the chances are? Um, no, I don't think uh, America's going to reelect Trump, unfortunately. Um, I think the walls are closing in on the Biden family. And I think, unfortunately, Newsom is going to be our next president. Do you think America would be bet would, would do well under Newsom, Gavin Newsom, President Newsom? You think we would do we would be a prosperous country under him? I think it's going to be a lot of the status quo is what I think. It's it's going to be hard hard to say, but I, that's that's my prediction. Gavin Newsom. All right, fair enough. I don't think any liberal would have a problem with that, but I do appreciate you coming on. Bitch Stewie. That's a hell of a name. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying thanks for having me. Enjoy your show. Absolutely. You're welcome back anytime you want. All right. Looking in the comments. Newsom isn't running for president, though. Not right now, he's not. I think if there was ever a, a candidate that was a sure thing to win, I'm going to still say it would be Michelle Obama. I understand my beloved my, beloved MAGA would hear Michelle Obama and respond with something like, go to hell. But I do believe, particularly what has, with what has happened with Roe v. Wade, a Michelle Obama candidacy would be a blowout. I do believe that. Because the Roe v. Wade, as even President Trump has pointed out, was a setback to folks on the right. They probably should have done that right after the 2024 election. 
that's probably when the Supreme Court should have adjudicated, uh, you know, whatever plans they had with Roe v. Wade. Keep in mind, with what has happened with LGBT rights show that you can present a fictional case and get shit done. I mean, after all, Roe v. Wade is based on a fictional circumstance. So they could have done this in 2024. If the Democrats ever received a gift, it is the Republicans, at least under their Supreme Court, rolling back Roe v. Wade. That is absolutely going to turn into millions of female votes. Period. There's no denying that. As I pointed out, even Trump has stated that. Uh, looking in the comments. Michelle doesn't want to run. I'll bet my house that Biden will be the 2024 nominee. Vance, I would agree with that. I would agree with that absolutely, that if, if no one gets in the way, Biden is a shoe in. We know Jay, uh, Robert Kennedy has no damn chance, So and neither does Mary Ann Williamson. So I do believe it will be a Trump v. Biden rematch. But if someone like Michelle Obama got in or Gavin Newsom got in, it could be a mess. Fortunately, they don't, neither one of them seem like they're trying to do that. Many folks are suggesting that Biden will be the nominee, but will not serve out his four years. Obviously, age is a big part of that. However, I, I always push back and just simply say that Trump is not a some type of spring chicken or something. Just because you think the guy is more sane or alert than Biden, both of them are at an age where if they just dropped dead, it would be natural causes. Both of them are in their late 70s. They've both lived beyond the lifespan of a typical American. So trading Biden, because you think he has some kind of mental health issues with Trump, is not a great trade in terms of health-wise. Trump is not in great shape. You think Trump could fall down the 747 steps like Biden did and get back up? You think Trump could fall off of a bike and get back up? I'm going to say probably not. Trump is not falling down because he ain't out there riding bikes. He's not even going to get on the bike. So while Trump may speak more consistent than Biden with Biden stuttering issues and things like that, I don't think you're getting a great trade from a health standpoint. We're not talking about Trump's legislation versus Biden. Folks have their own which one they favor. I'm talking about just simply from a matter of health. You're not making a great trade going from Trump, from Biden to Trump. You're just not. Uh, looking in the comments, fried chicken Trump. Oh, my God. Well, Trump's a white guy, so we're not going to call that racist. But that is funny. Fried chicken Obama might get a different response. Trump, oh, he's, he's real stable ment ment mentally. We've seen his baby fit he had when he lost. Mike Honcho, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about Trump in regards to how he reacted after getting the news that he lost the election. Even Geraldo has been going around saying, and, and um, Chris Christie, too. Both of them have been saying that Trump turned into a madman after losing the election. They both voted for Trump. They're both long-term friends of Trump. And both of them are like, I don't even know who this guy is. Once he lost, he turned into a madman. Uh, looking in the comments here real quick, you guys tapping the screen. I don't know why I can't get 50 or 60,000 likes with 800 people in here. What the hell? I'm trying to deliver you guys decent content. At the very least, show your boys some appreciation. This is free fucking content. All right, going back to the box. Won't tap the screen, goddamn. Right lane runner. I believe that's what that says. Right lane runner. Good afternoon. Did I tap? Wait a minute. I hit the wrong thing. I don't know what the hell happened. Actually, it's Tom Daddy on my fault. Biden, worst president in U.S. history, Trump the best. What say you? Uh, hello, by the way. How are you? Good to see you, my friend. I've I'm doing you. good. I've seen you go on every now and then. I see you comment on a video I do, and I'm like, ah, I must be popping up on his FYP somewhere or something. You know, the crazy guy from Queens yelling and shit. Absolutely. And but, uh, yeah, I appreciate you. Uh, and uh, oh yes, and Didario is my last name. Just so you, I oh. just don't mean to don't mean to correct you, but all right, why not? never mind. Right that's all good. Okay, my Didario, I'll there, get right? it correct. But, but anyway, I'll get it correct. Um, you know, best, best worst. You know, I like that guy who was just on. Man, I, I really appreciated him. I, I I feel like he he does have. He is. You know, look, he could accuse me of the same thing, right? But I'm saying I do believe that he's listening to a little bit of the propaganda by saying the walls are closing in on Biden. 
because there aren't really like realistically speaking and just from a, a, a just from a um you know a, a scientific perspective like statistically there are no investigations there are no indictments there are no investigations really even on the horizon or indictments that are potentially on the horizon so assuming that gavin newsom would somehow join the race biden would literally have to be now don't forget they have been talking all the times that donald trump can run from prison so what mm -hmm. makes him think that joe biden if he was i mean like magically indicted on some investigation that isn't there it's very difficult to assume we're going to have an indictment when we don't have an investigation let you know, me you know, let me interrupt and say this let me interrupt to say this this will make me sound more pro-liberal which to some degree i am but i will say this if, in regards to having a candidate run from prison and i think you were on the cusp of saying what would make him think that biden wouldn't continue running the liberals wouldn't put up with it i will it say in my humble opinion the liberals are a bit harder on their own when their own does wrong. If Biden was convicted of a crime and sentenced to prison, the liberals would not back up Biden the way the Republicans will still back up Trump. The liberals are not in the camp. The liberals are not in the camp that Biden can do no wrong. I think the I think MAGA and some Republicans believe that any charge against Trump is a witch hunt and therefore is made up. I don't think the liberals feel the same way about Biden. Go ahead. Well, look at what Al Franken did. He held his hands right. a few inches from someone who actually said they didn't they didn't care. It didn't even bother them when she was interviewed. And yet Al Franken hit the bricks like a day later. And uh, so and then Matt Getz, who was accused of, uh, you know, stuff with you know, uh, underage girls, uh, Jim Jordan, who was accused of covering up, you know, some stuff. So you're a hundred percent right. I, com I completely stand corrected. I, the, I think the, the worst, I think the worst, most egregious case currently is Congressman Santos out there in New York. How they're yes. still, I mean, everything about the man is a lie and they know it's a lie and they're not pushing for that man to step down. Well, the Republican party here is the Republican, like, house or whatever you want to call them on long island has publicly called for his resignation the entire republican there is not a single republican in new york that's why i believe new york republicans and democrats work well together that's why we have good programs and we have good roads and our sewers and our water and our transportation that's why new york kind of gets it done because they work together yeah now no. go ahead Go on, please. No, so the, what What about the notion that Biden is somehow the worst we've ever had? Now, I get your point that he's not been indicted or convicted of anything. And let's just be honest. Even if Biden is guilty of sin, as long as he's president, you're not going to get a good invest. Just like with Trump. We knew for a fact, no matter what Trump did, you're not going to get a legitimate investigation of a sitting president. I, do I believe Biden is 100 percent innocent of everything that they're going after him and his son for? No, I do not. But I do believe if you are president of the United States, you're going to get all sorts of privileges that will prevent folks from finding out the truth. I mean, there's a hell of a lot of liberals that know the more Biden looks bad, the more it helps folks on the right. So even if people think that Biden is somehow a little bit dirty, they're not necessarily going to going to cop to it. So do you believe he's a totally innocent guy talking about Biden? Uh, well, I mean, I think anybody who has sat in politics for 50 years and having a successful career, you count. I mean, I'm not even sure if there are many millionaires that don't have their hands dirty in one form or another. I don't right. believe that it's, it's very difficult to become as powerful as these people are and not have their hands dirty in one regard or another. Or was Hunter protected because he is his son? Who knows? Uh, are there times when he got kickbacks in the 70s, 80s? Some of the rhetoric he used was quite racist, just like I was born in 61 and I said some shit I'm not proud of in the 70s and I had to change and examine myself. And well, what, about the tax, what about tax evasion? What about tax evasion claims? I, well, I mean, I believe that just like with everything else, do the investigation, make the arrest, uh, make the charge. Uh, you know, whatever Hunter did wrong, I thought they would kind of be a little bit excited about about Hunter getting arrested. And as it turns out, they weren't because they expected something else from it when 
rich people are going to do rich people shit. Yeah. Rich people are yeah. going to get away with shit because they're rich. You know, sometimes. Yeah. And, world, I, and I, I, I agree. I agree 100 percent that a rich person, you know, lying on a gun application. I do believe anybody of Joe Biden's prominence, whether they're a politician or not, they're not going to get any type of serious charge. So folks who expected him to be charged with a felony for lying on a gun application and getting this huge sentence. You don't, as you point out, you don't know rich people shit. I'll let you continue, but I want to. Uh, this comment I saw in the comment section I thought is pretty funny because I'm always asking people to tap the screen. DC says MAGA, tap the screen. This is a place you can lie. Now, I don't block, bed or censor anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, thank you for the hat mustache. But MAGA, if you're watching, yes, tap the screen. This is a place you can speak. So go you ahead. I speak. thought that was funny. Let's though. not let that is very funny. That's an, a comment <laughs> worth addressing. Uh, we we want to say speak, not lie, because uh, then that would be, it would be right. a, a twist on your show that we don't want. Right. But that's fantastic. Um, I, you know, I do I do feel like that there is there. You know, I'm I'm not concerned. I I, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't put it that way. I, I'll put it this way. I'm. It's not that I'm not concerned about criminality coming from the Bidens. I'm concerned about the idea that people just say everyone knows like there's a lot of rhetoric like that. Everybody yeah. knows that there's no way that Joe Biden won from his basement. Like some of that rhetoric is kind of it's feelings. People are not going by facts. They're going by feelings. And look, I get feelings. When Donald Trump won, I was upset. I, did, I was up in my fields, you know, when I heard him make his first speech. I thought there was a chance that he would be my president because he did say, uh, I want to thank the Clintons. They ran a great campaign. Give them a round of applause. I'm going to need some help. I know I made some people angry. Like these are Donald Trump's words. Yeah, if that's he, hard to believe in 2023. He did say that, but damn, you reminded me and I'm like, wow, did Trump, me? and I do remember him saying it. That does not right. sound like Trump that we know though. Right. And when he did, I said to myself, oh, oh, wow. Like, I thought, OK, maybe the office is, is changing the man because they say when you get behind that desk and you ha you're, there's, there, it humbles anyone. And I guess, you know, it's hard to humble Godzilla. What can I tell you? You know, <laughs> well, you know, the man did say he was going to act presidential if he got elected. And yeah, he turned it more into a king. But Tom, I can't pronounce. I got to move it on. Well, but you said okay. Tom. It's it, an easy way to remember it is hi ho de Dario. Did, okay. All right. I still can't get it. That's all right, my friend. <laughs> I'll that's never okay. forget it, though. I'll never forget it. No, appreciate that's okay. It. I appreciate you. That's Have cool. a great day, and uh, it was a pleasure to come up. Same, same. Uh, comments. Trump was a criminal long before he was elected. Listen, I'm going to say the same thing I often say. Andrew, I'm going to say the same thing I often say when folks suggest that Hillary Clinton is a criminal or the Biden crime family. Every American is entitled to their day in court. Trump has had many, well, he has many days in court on the horizon, a hell of a lot of them, but currently he's not been convicted of anything criminal. So the idea that he was a criminal before he was elected, officially he's not. Now we can talk about not paying off contractors, Trump University, not renting African Americans and all of that stuff, but until it turns into a conviction, it's just accusations. No different then lock her up or the Biden crime family. I've had these conversations with folks on both sides. We all deserve our day in court. We all deserve due process. But when we dislike someone, or in some cases outright hate someone, we don't want to give them due process. We want to give them prison time. Or in the case of Mike Pence, dangling time. All right, going back to the box. He stole from cancer charities. That was proven in court. Yikes. Yikes, that's that's real bad. Uh, Trump University was a fraud. Yeah, but he paid civilly for that. But until he's convicted criminally, it is what it is. He never been formally charged of any crimes either. Yeah, well, Trump has now been formally charged of a lot of shit. Trump is going to, right now, currently, he has about 70 crimes that he's been formally charged. I mean, formally, where they listed him out. That's 70 with two indictments, 70 plus, like 73, 74. Two more indictments are coming out. One potentially this very week, Lady CTN with the TikTok cap. Thank you. 
So my humble opinion, my guess is, and if I was a betting man, I'd put about three to one odds on this, is that by the end of this year, Trump will have been charged with over 100 crimes. I do believe, now that's not to say he'll be convicted of any of this shit, but I do believe, whether through Jack Smith, Merrick Garland, the African-American gentleman in New York, or down in Georgia, Trump will have accumulated over a hundred different criminal accusations in various courts around the country. I do believe that. That's a hell of a lot to beat, folks. I understand my beloved MAGA believes he's innocent on all of those. That's fine. You have your right to that opinion. But make no mistake about it, at least in federal court, their conviction rate is something awful. Well over 90%. So the way I often say it is like this. Imagine someone that shoots and hits the target 95% of the, chance, the time. So you have to stand out there in the field and this person gets to shoot at you with a 95% accuracy rate and they get over a hundred times to shoot at you and they have to miss all of those. That is kind of what Trump is facing in my humble opinion. Now, clearly he can still run for president if he's found guilty on a host of those charges. I think the espionage charge is about the only one that really would stop him from running. But the notion that he is not going to be convicted of any of this shit, probably 10, 15 to 1 odds if I had to estimate, if I had to bet, I'd probably pay out about 15 to 1 odds, you bet $20 with me and I'll give you 15 times that if he if you win. I think it's almost an absolute certainty that Trump is going to be found guilty of some shit. It's just a matter of what. Now, as I pointed out, that doesn't mean he can't still run for president and win. But he will be found guilty of some of those charges. It just, I think it's a pipe dream. I think it's a fantasy to assume that he's going to beat all of that stuff in all of those different locations. It's just not going to happen. doesn't matter if you love Trump or you don't love Trump. Even if it was my own damn mama or dad and they were facing what Trump is facing, even if I thought they were 100% innocent, I would be prepared for my mom or dad to go up the river for a little bit. I know you didn't do it, but with all of this shit, you're not going to beat all this. You're just not going to beat all of this. And I don't think Trump is going to beat all of that stuff. I just... Just being honest, just being honest. And I see in the comments, uh, T Tony Hawkins just said, you'll take that bet. Well, I don't know you enough to make the bet, but if you were somebody I was hanging around, I'd bet. I'd be willing to pay two or $300 for a $20 bet that Trump b defeats all those charges. I don't think he's going to beat that. You know, my brother or somebody wants to bet me $300. You give me $300, all I got to give you is 20 But Trump's got to beat all of these charges. No, he's not going to win all those charges. Now, he might get pardoned. Something of that nature. He might plead out for lower time or lower whatever case it may be, but he's not going to be found not guilty on all of that shit. It's just, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. All right, looking in the comments. That's an easy 300. Yeah, okay, good luck with that. Uh, what's going to happen, my humble opinion, he'll be found guilty of some shit and you'll say he's railroaded. He was innocent, but they railroaded him. The judge was part of the deep state or the prosecutors were paid off by the... It'll be something like that. But at the end of the day, he's going to be found guilty. Trump will die with a criminal record. There's absolutely no denying that. Absolutely no denying it. We'll have folks that'll say that it was bullshit, made up, but he will die with a criminal record. I don't see any other way around it. Uh, looking in the comment, or better yet, the box... Let's try this again. I don't know what happened with my last, but they always have excuses. Well, it is what it is, but he's going to die with a criminal record. I don't I don't believe any way, fashion, or form otherwise. Right Lane, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Do you think I'm getting it wrong? You think Trump's going to beat all of the charges he's facing? Uh, it seems like they're digging and grasping at straws. And, you know, at some point, you know, just like what the other guy said, as far as like getting into power, um, you know, you're not going to be completely 100% innocent. And I think they are going to find something to convict him. But honestly, like uh, going back to, you know, your main question of which one do I think is better, Trump or Biden? Um, 
No, wait. I didn't ask who's better. I didn't ask who's better. I said, is, is Trump the greatest opinion. of all time? Is Biden the worst? Right. Well, I will say this. Trump, okay, so if y'all have watched any of like the, like the sex trafficking that's going on in this country, it's coming through the southern border. They have proven that. And Trump was trying to build a wall to not only keep out the you know, the aliens coming into this country that's working, not paying taxes, sending money back to their families, which I think if they're going to come over here, they need to bring the whole family and do it right and come through our legal system and get their citizenship. Yeah, but can they, can they afford that? You know how much money it costs to, to legally migrate an entire family to the United States? Well, I do remember Ron DeSantis saying that they get four years on their work visa before they do have to go to court to to try to stay longer and therefore, you know, get their citizenship. But at the same time, though, that sex trafficking is coming through our southern border and that and we got fentanyl coming through the southern border. I think building the wall and having checkpoints where uh, – to make sure people come in, at least have their work visa instead of being paid under the table, you know, with no taxes. Uh, I think that that honestly was a good thing that Trump was trying to do. It would take care of a lot of crime in our country. And I don't disagree that we need to strengthen our border, but I, I think one of the biggest issues where I think Trump has failed in regards to the border is We act as though these immigrants are coming to this country, causing Mm -hmm. harm in various ways, all on their own. The fact is, they're bringing fentanyl across the border because a hell of a lot of Americans want to consume it. Sex trafficking is happening because a hell of a lot of Americans want to have sex. They're coming across and getting jobs because a hell of a lot of Americans want to employ them. We keep pretending like they're doing all this stuff by themselves. Where is the push? to go after all of the Americans that are co-conspirators in this stuff. That, um, I mean, that's a, it's a very difficult subject. And I a hundred percent agree, agree with you. They do need to go after those people. They do need to throw them in prison. Honestly, if they're, you know, in the sex trafficking business, I believe that they need to throw them under the jail. But, um, Also, at the same time, you know, to serve and protect is what the police, like, that's what they have on the side of their cars. And that's what the job of presidency is supposed to be. And protecting is not just about what somebody, you know, thinks is okay. It's about the whole, you know, (sighs) trying to think of the word. It's it's about the, the whole principle of it. You know, like you're, yeah, like you're I, I kids, believe, you know, I, they don't. I strongly believe at the end of the day, folks on the right are giving the border lip service. Do I believe Trump truly cares about the border issue? Yes, I do. But I do believe most folks on the right are just giving it lip service because it's politically valuable. But there's a hell of a lot of employers that hire illegal immigrants. They're not all liberals. Tyson Foods and all these companies that are making a killing off cheap labor, a lot of these farmers and hotels and construction companies, them are not all liberals. A hell of a lot of them folks that own those companies are right-wingers. And they and folks on the right know that if you start targeting folks that are hiring illegals in your state, you're going to start hurting some of your own constituents and some of your own base. That's why you don't see any Congress people or senators really going gung-ho after Americans that are co-conspirators in this. Everybody is blaming the immigrant as if they're constructing and orchestrating all of this mayhem all by themselves. And that's just disingenuous, in my opinion. Well, something that I like about Ron DeSantis is what he's doing down there in Florida as far as he, he's created an app for businesses to be able to register every single bo- or everybody that works for them with the app, with the state of Florida, that basically it tries to get to get rid of the, uh, the illegal immigrants. And he also came out and said that he would send his own team down there of engineers to construct a wall. But you notice, you notice all of the Republicans are unanimously in favor of the wall, but they're not all unanimously saying what you just said Ron DeSantis is doing with E-Verify. 
Every Republican state should be doing that. If they truly cared about what's going on at the border and they wanted to build a wall to control it, every one of them would be saying we're going after employers in our states that hire these people. Ron DeSantis is really one of the only ones doing it. So that should show you that there is not a huge stomach for going out to immigrants. And Ron DeSantis is only doing it because he's president, running for president right now. He wasn't doing it in the beginning either. You do make a fair point on that one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I'm, just, I I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. It's like going out to drugs, trying to trying to get drugs off the street, and you're only going after the users. You're completely ignoring the dealers. These folks come here to this country. Many of them, when they're caught in the desert, they already got resumes and paperwork and addresses of jobs that are going to hire them on their person. Why don't the why don't Border Patrol, when they get those addresses, immediately go to those companies and do some type of investigation? This how the hell does this guy coming into the country that's never been here already know that this company is hiring? How does he know that? That's the problem, is we're ignoring the Americans that are doing this stuff. It's gonna keep happening under those rules. You make an excellent point. Yeah. You really do. So until so, they do that, but go ahead. No, oh, I was uh, I was thinking that we were going to go to a different topic because I got I got a few things about Biden and Trump. Give me what you got. I'm gonna have to move it on, but give me what you got. Um, things that I don't agree with with, or I'm gonna start with Trump. Trump creating the XL pipeline to have the influx of oil flowing in, you know, from Alaska to Canada would have been would have made us self-sufficient on oil where we did not have to be a dependent country on other countries to buy from oil and honestly how do you, how do you feel about had, let's let's talk about energy independence how do you feel about folks on the left the biden administration pointing out that climate change is a major issue we need to get away from oil talking about all of the rising temperatures and issues around the world do you see climate tro climate change as a real issue to be concerned with at all Um, I don't really, I don't really agree with that because I mean, if you look at, you know, I mean, I'm hearing double right now. Cause I had somebody call me and it's messed up the okay. live. So, so yeah, if that's the case, I just, I have to go ahead and drop you if you can't hear me, but I was just trying to find out because Virtually all of the scientists in this <laughs> on the planet right now are suggesting that we're ha we're going through major climate issues. They're talking about the 20 is hottest temperatures on Earth have all been recorded this month. Do you believe there's any issue with climate change? Okay. Apparently, my last guest was having an issue. Let me know if you guys see I'm, if I'm buffering or not. Looking in the comments, it's strange how people assume handsome is MAGA. Well, Fancy Prince is certainly a friend of the program go way back. In regards to people assuming I'm MAGA, well, obviously I got the hat up. Second issue is I don't condemn MAGA wholesale. I don't believe that there is absolutely no reason why somebody would vote for Trump or no, there's no reason why a black person would support Trump. You don't hear me saying that. Although I vote left and lean left, I can see a hell of a lot of reasons why somebody would vote for Trump. So... All of that means that I'm not playing on the proper side, at least from the liberal standpoint. You're not totally liberal. I get folks all the time, pick a side. I see it on my YouTube page. I see it on here. People telling me you need to pick a side. In this current environment, people are not big fans of moderates. People are not big fans of what I refer to as free thinkers, where you don't just vote the party line. So the fact that I claim to be a liberal, but I'm not completely hating or trashing Trump on every broadcast makes me kind of a man with no party. The liberals do not think I'm one of them, and MAGA thinks I'm too liberal. So it is what it is. But no, I believe there's reasons to look at policies and issues and be concerned no matter what side of the aisle. Um, <laughs> so it says, damn show hot today. Hampton, I do appreciate that. Unfortunately, as hot as this show is, it is a lunch break live. And you know what we do about this time always. Let me just say this. If you do enjoy civilized dialogue from both sides of the aisle, 
without any fear of being blocked, banned, or censored, you are in the right place. You should follow the program. We let folks speak. That is literally the mindset of the program. We don't block, ban, or censor anyone. So understand that if you have a difference of opinion, yeah, fancy, prancy, thank you. Understand that if you have a difference of opinion from the host, I will never, I repeat, never block, ban, or censor you on this program because you and I disagree. I won't even limit your damn time. Anybody that's been following over a year understands that. But if this is what you like, yeah, follow the program. We're here Monday through Friday. As always, it is a lunch break live. I would have loved 100,000. I didn't realize some, some of you guys have been tapping the screen. 98,000 likes appreciate that i do appreciate the follows nevertheless as always i am a working man just like most of you folks are i have to get back to my regular job see you guys tomorrow broadcast over a hundred thousand thank you